Welcome to the Wide for the Win podcast. Reach readers around the world. Diversify your income. Get your global sales soaring. And break free of any single retailer's stranglehold on your author business. We're here to help you optimize your long-term goals for writing and publishing success. So let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this version of Widestream. Uh, today, I, Erin Wright, am welcoming D.F. Hart, otherwise known as Deanna, um, to our Widestream podcast. Hello, Deanna. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I am doing awesome. So excited to hang out with you this morning. Um, so for anybody who is not as blessed as I am to get to hang out in your sparkling personality and <laughs> and and company uh, more often, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the author world. Well, first of all, thanks for that. And I think my the the level of sparkle is directly proportional to the level of caffeine. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the later the later in the day someone catches me, the, the happier and more fun I'm going to be. Um, <laughs> the author journey for me has has been kind of a wild ride. I growing up, I always knew that I wanted to do something with literature. My initial dream was to be a, a college professor who taught Chaucer and Shakespeare and was an author in their off time. Yeah. Um, life has a sense of humor. I've been an accountant for the past 28 years now. I like it and I'm good at it, but it's not my passion. Um, way back when I was a freshman in college, 1989, I was watching a televi televised broadcast, live broadcast of the Berlin Wall being dismantled. And my first thought back then, other than, well, I'm watching history being made was, how cool would it be if somebody had put like secret documents in the wall for safekeeping and then went and retrieved them when the wall came down. So my initial book idea I had in 1989, um, I actually didn't do anything about it until 2010. So I carried that book idea around in my head for quite a few years before I got up the, the, the courage to write it. And it was a, I'm almost 40. Um, I better get this out of my head and onto the page. And if for just for me, if if for no other reason. So I that was not, kind of the beginning. I did not know that's where that came from. That's yeah. really fascinating. <laughs> I yeah. wish um, I was not as um, aware of world events in 1989. And so I, I mean, I was, I was younger then. And so um, I did not get to watch that come down. So uh, that's, that's really cool that you got to watch it in real time and, and see history being made. Uh, oh, yeah. Usually when it's, when I, uh, there's something that I'm like, I will remember this forever. It's not good. Like 9-11 or January right. 6th, you know, <laughs> this yeah. was good man, uh, yeah. history being made. So yeah. that's really a fun um, genesis for that story. So you wrote it in 2010 and, and then what? Uh, I actually, I started writing it in 2009. I spent a year researching um, what Berlin and Germany looked like as the war was happening and then in post-World War II, uh, even down to like this street, which is now called this name, used to be called this name because I'm a stickler for detail. And so I wanted, if, it, if I, at that point, I really hadn't even decided I was going to publish it, but I'm enough, I'm detail oriented enough that I wanted it to, to ring true that my character is walking down such and such street and makes a right turn on such and such street. You know, I, uh, if anything, I probably went a little bit overboard with my research. Um, but I, yeah, I got all, gathered all, all that together. And then it took me about 10 months to write. And at that point I, um, and this is a, this is where the confessional part comes in, and, and it's super important for anybody brand new to publishing who's watching this. I did not realize that a self-publishing was an option back then. Mm -hmm. It didn't have as many branches on that particular tree as it does today. There weren't as many avenues to self-publish as there are today, but it did what, still exist. What I did year, not know that. Right. What year are we talking about at this point? 2010, 2011. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So still, still at that. Okay. So you started looking at it, like, as soon as you started writing, that's impressive. Most yeah. people take like five years to write their first books. So that's why I was asking. Okay. All right. Yeah. So 2010, yeah. 2011, you didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know what I didn't know. 
How, right? how often do we get to say that in our author career? <laughs> um, but so I just, I, I, I went on the web, I went on the internet and literally typed in publishing a book. Now, this is a huge warning for the, those in the audience. If you are approached by a company or if you find a company and they ask you to put up any money, that is not a publisher. That is a vanity press. And you need to run as hard and fast and far as you can the opposite direction. At the time, circa, circa 2020, 2011, I didn't realize that. And so I initially, my book initially landed with Vanity Press. Um, and it sat dormant and didn't do a whole lot uh, from 2010 to 2018-ish. And at the, back then, I was ignorant. I didn't realize it was Vanity Press. So I was happy because I was a published author whatever <laughs> um about 2018 i was like you know i left some i left a couple of loose threads at the end of that first book and when i started on this journey all i wanted to do is get that that story i'd carried around for 20 years out of my head and onto the page and, and be done with it well eight years later the creative bug bit me again and i was like maybe i can maybe i need to, to tell people the after story right and so i started work on the second book and at the at the time the first book was called wall of secrets or actually, I'm sorry, Very the very first title for that book was And the Wall Came Down. How clunky and ponderous is that, right? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I still have paperback books on my shelf that's over here behind me with the original title, the original cover. It did not look like a mystery thriller, a crime thriller. It looked like a nonfiction history book. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, just... and the wall came down and I'm sure. And the wall it... came down. Yeah. Yes, I'm so sure uh, that was not confusing <laughs> at all to anyone looking for a mystery crime thriller. <laughs> yes. Yes. People watching this video can go back and, and rewind it later and, and hashtag clueless, clueless about the whole, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in 2018, I started writing the, the, the sequel. Um, I was also really active in Goodreads back then. And I happened to cross an author whose name is A.W. Exley. She was the first truly indie author that I met. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, with, with much love and affection and with a couple of very well-timed slaps upside the back of my head, <laughs> she helped me, she helped me realize that I was, that I had t tied myself to a vanity press. And she helped me realize that I could do this by myself if I chose to. Mm -hmm. um, I will, so I will forever be grateful and I'll say it as loudly as publicly as possible. I will always be grateful to A.W. Exley for, for, as she calls it, scooping the starfish out of the small puddle on the beach and flinging her into the ocean. <laughs> so um, when I decided to, to get my rights back from the Vanity Press, I did that, it took about six months. It was a pain in the ass but I got it. And um, at that point uh, in my world, I still had not discovered the wide for the wind group. So I landed in a couple of other Facebook author groups that were very KU centric. Um, and since I didn't realize that there was another way to go at that point, besides KU, that's, that's what I did. And I learned very quickly that um, the KU hamster rule was not, and I are not compatible, compatible <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I write very, I write very slowly. Um, I didn't have, I had pretty much a zero budget to speak of, to set aside for books and for covers and, and editing and things like that. So um, I didn't even last, I don't think my stuff even lasted a full 90 days in KU. Um, and keep in mind, I still had the old crappy cover with the old crappy title. All I did was just assign in a new ISB and I bought a bundle of, of ISBNs. I think I bought of like six to start with. Like that mm -hmm. tiny little tiny bundle. And so I gave it, I, I you know, so I burned one of my ISBNs number on this crappy book with this not the not a crappy book. The writing was was fairly solid, but the title the title was horrible, the cover was horrible, right? And so about in 2019-ish, somewhere in there or uh, maybe early 2020 is when I found the wide for the win author group. So I joined there yeah. and, and soaked up as much knowledge as I could. And, and that's when I realized, okay, the titles aren't cutting it. The covers aren't cutting it. So I did it. my first rebranding, uh, getting the titles figured out. Uh, I went with new covers, but because I was in my designer's way, they still weren't 
where they needed to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at that, during that time, I wrote books three and four and got them out in the world. Um, I had just started work on book five, I think, when I realized that um, something, something wasn't right. I still wasn't making any traction on any of the wide fronts or wide storefronts, wide fronts. <laughs> we ought to coin that. It's a we wide front. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, act, I booked a consult with Craig at Hidden Gems. Mm -hmm. And I, at that point, I'd also had some romance stories pop up in my head. I know multi-genre, what? Um, <laughs> That's where my brain went. I had a supplemental yeah. character in Vital Secrets that I felt sorry for because I put her through the ringer. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to write her her very own happily ever after. Keep in mind, I'd studied nothing about romance at that point. I didn't know tropes. I didn't know the subgenres. And blah. I was like, you know, no, Maddie deserves an HEA. That's all there is to it. I'm doing it. Whatever. I love anyway. how <laughs> authory that is. Like, oh, this character that I made up in my head who does not exist and needs to have an HEA. <laughs> that is like the most author thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I cranked out her story and then I got inspired and wrote like seven more little romance novellas and they weren't moving the way I needed them to. Now, keep in mind, I was in huge denial at, still at that point in my career that what I had for the Vital Secret series was, that was fine. It'll take off. It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So I booked a consult with, consult with with Craig. And we were focused on the romance stuff at first. And Craig said, how's your thriller stuff doing? And denial me. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Really? Let's just take a look. I want to see what kind of data you got because that series has been out longer. Okay, sure. Thinking, it's, it's good. Yeah, it was so not good. It was so not good. And and Craig was the one to tell me these covers are beautiful. They do not say crime thriller. You you are you are you are missing your entire target audience with these covers. Right. So at that good point, job, the Craig. account. Good if job, Craig. To us, if you're listening to us, good job. Gold star on your forehead. <laughs> yes, Craig. Thank you so much. But you know, and I was also still on a very limited budget, right? And so. I, it got to a point where I was, I had a choice and I, 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 it can be very painful for us as authors because that's our book. It's our baby, our blood, sweat, tears, and even little chunks of our soul are mixed into that thing. And we're resistant. We're naturally reluctant and resistant to change, right? Because we've already put so much time and effort into that, that book baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I had to switch gears. I had to take off my author hat and put on my accountant hat which has served me really well for the past 28 years and say, okay, Deanna, you've got $300 right now. You can either spend it on advertising or you can get these books free covered because what you've got is not cut. Yeah. Plain and simple. Well, and, and if you I didn't want to, of, <laughs> I didn't want spend, to, <laughs> if you spend a bunch of money advertising a book that is not hitting the expectations of that genre in terms of cover and such, then you are really just setting that money on fire because it doesn't matter yeah. how hard you push. It's not ever going to budge. So, yep, yep. yep. It, it's like, it's like driving your car down the freeway, rolling down the window and just tossing bills out the door, out, out of the open window. That's that that's the result you're going to get. Yep. So I, I marinated on it over a weekend and said, you know what, Craig's right. I need to, I need to get this done. So I researched um, cover designers who were very um, strong in my genre. A lot of them, I, I'll be honest, were out of my price bracket. So, but I, I found a guy whose designs I really, really liked and they were reasonably priced. Um, that is, um, Oh my God. I just forgot his name. Adrigis with rocking book covers. Uh, I was just so, going to say, I can remember the rocking part. I didn't remember yeah, his yeah. name. <laughs> rocking, rocking book covers. So my second piece of advice to anybody watching this, who's especially those brand new to the game is um, don't think that you are stuck paying $500 or more for a cover. There are a ton of great cover designers out there who will help you exactly capture the genre and the tropes and the expectations uh, for your book without breaking your wallet. Okay. A lot of them have a gallery of pre-made covers. That is what I chose to use. I went through addresses. His, I, I picked out like six or seven 
pre-made covers that were very similar in design. And then I reached out to him and said, hey, I really like these. Can you tweak these just a, a bit for me? And he did. And the rest is history. He's been my cover designer ever since. He will be my cover designer and until and or unless one day I opt to, to, to stop doing this, which is not any time in the foreseeable future. Um, so that was October 2020 that I did the 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 revamp of the covers um and and put them back out in the universe and up until that point I'd learned enough in wide for the wind group that I needed to be planned for a book book feature deal so I started doing that like every every month like clockwork okay it's time to get rejected for another book book feature deal you know <laughs> yeah so um and I don't think it's coincidental that the month after I I I went with with Adridges and got him on board and redid all my covers and, and relaunched them. I don't think it's an accident that the following month I was selected for my first ever book book feature deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because agreed. they were finally hitting the the expectations of the genre, right? And so I went from oh. making four hundred dollars my first year as an indie to. 3000 ish as the second year mm -hmm. because so of the book quick, feature though, I thought you got a book but before that did you not get one previous to then with you know I set? would have to I would have to go I think I did I think I did with the old crappy covers and I and I and the price point was horrible yeah don't do that's what don't I was do thinking. don't 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 do 299 don't do, <laughs> don't do, <laughs> don't, don't do 199 or 299 it. That's, I mean, your mileage may vary, but for my, my personal experience to looking back, to be honest, I'm amazed. I got the damn thing. I really am. Um, it was international only. It was on two books that had, um, uh, really crappy covers. Um, <laughs> uh, the titles had been fixed, but the, the covers hadn't at that point. And, um, yeah dead zone I, I did dead zone pricing what they call dead zone pricing mm -hmm. yeah you always want to try to do 99 center free on on a book book feature deal so yeah unless your yeah. name is like nora roberts or james Patterson, <laughs> exactly. in which case hey welcome thanks for listening to our little podcast um you know yeah. super cool to have you here and otherwise if you're not so named that uh definitely stick with 99 sensor or free yeah. uh, in terms of best yeah. roi practices yeah. Yeah, Nora James, big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out there in the universe. Right. But yeah, so, but you know, it, 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 there's so much when we start this journey that we don't know that we don't know. And that's why Wide for the Wind group is, is monumentally important, in my opinion, in helping authors avoid the pitfalls that, that can happen on this path, right? Because there's what, 16,000 of us now in this group? Yeah, some something Ish. like that. We're getting Ish. huge. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a there's a ton of resources here. There's a ton of cautionary tales. You know, mm -hmm. um, don't be mm -hmm. me. Pay attention. Yeah. Um, learn as much as you can. If you're able to do, if you're able to soak up and learn as much as you can before your first book hits the market, that's even better. You're going to be light years ahead of the curve from from those of us who have have gone have started on this path before you who didn't know what we were doing right mm -hmm. we didn't know what we didn't know and we suffered the consequences of those choices be it um poor marketplace response not earning back what we've spent for covers um you know there's a, a whole myriad of things and those things can be very demoralizing and very debilitating to us as authors mm -hmm. right because we put our heart and soul as i said before into this into these projects and when they don't become international bestsellers overnight, we get our feelings hurt, what? right? Are you being we, serious? <laughs> mine were at mine hit USA Today and New York Times and Wall Street <laughs> Journal like that. I just like slumming it, you know, with normal authors just because, but I've got, you know, really. <laughs> My, and, and so having walked that, having personally experienced not doing something right and and seeing the either no no needle movement or all or it coming back and biting me squarely on the behind later my grandmother always said learn from the mistakes of others you cannot possibly live long enough to make them all yourself <laughs> 
but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yes. I, I'm just, I'm grateful that Wide for the Win exists. That, 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 this group, your group was pivotal yeah. in not only structuring my approach to the way I do things, but actually understanding what the wide mindset means, right? Because yeah. there are so many groups and there are so many courses and there are so many teachers out there and they just, they push KU, push, 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 push. And mm -hmm. up until I found this group, there was, there, there wasn't any information on, well, what if I don't want to, what if I visit, what if my, I physically, physically and mentally and stress level wise can't handle being in KU. Am I just supposed mm -hmm. to quit? Right. Yeah. Because that's to the, that's the point I was at when I found one for the one group. Right. Mm -hmm. So like hadn't even gotten two books in and was already done. Was already burning out because I was I was that starfish floating in the in the you know and and it, AW picked me up and flung me in the ocean as she calls it but I still had a lot to learn about swimming right yeah for sure so yeah um so you you went wide you um, ended up with two different genres now are those under the same pen name or have you split those apart between your romance no. and your mystery thriller suspense no i i the mystery thriller has always been df hard okay my initials because i find that to be more sus mysterious and suspenseful than my first name um <laughs> and then i when i went to when i when i wrote those romance novellas by that point i at least had been around and, and learned enough to know that mixing those two genres was probably not a good idea right because mm -hmm. it would affect also bots and other things so that set of stories, I, I just went with my middle name, Faith Heart. Okay. For those. All right. Yeah. And, and are you still actively writing under your Faith Heart or have you turned over just to DF Heart? Um, at this time, uh, I've got seven titles out plus the box set of, of all of them with the bonus story in it, it under Faith Heart. I've got one romantic suspense because then my weird little brain, a couple of years down the road from there said... I really need a way to tie these two worlds together. Ah, romantic suspense. That'll be an excellent bridge. And so I've got one book out there so far that's DF Hart writing as Faith Hart. Thank you, Nora Roberts slash JD Rock for the inspiration there. <laughs> I told you I was a fan of hers. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, and I planned at least two more books in that set, but it hasn't happened yet because Vital Secrets took off. Finally. Yay. took off i got the book book feature deal and then a year and a half ish after that i managed to land a nook free friday uh -huh. which 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 broke stuff wide open um barnes and noble is consistent consistently my number two store and it's it's within a couple hundred dollars of amazon at this point and has been since that free friday thing happened i mean Bar barnes and noble i finally gained traction on barnes and noble with that um so romance is on the back burner for now. I had every intention of stopping. Keep in mind, I never planned on writing more than a book, right? I've got seven right. out now. And I mean, just on thriller side, I've got seven out now and I've got eight over here on the romance side. So uh, book seven, End of Secrets was titled End of Secrets because I thought I was going to wrap that series up. Right, uh, yeah. My, my, my readers actually convinced me otherwise. And so I'm continuing with that series. So book eight comes out in September. I've got, let me look, let me, let me, I've got a big whiteboard on my wall that's my cheat sheet because I can't remember half the time what I'm doing. I actually have three more books. Eight, nine, nine, eight, nine, 10, 11. But I need to have, I, I need to have uh, four more books because I heard from a little birdie, Aaron Wright, once upon a time that <laughs> it's better to write them in clumps of four. And that way you've got some, some awesome flexibility and possibilities with four book box sets. So yeah, I'm writing book eight now. So I'll have, I've got three more actually named and plot set ideas for, um, probably ought to disclose. I'm not a full plotter. I'm a discovery writer. So I'm mm -hmm. like, and it, it helps, I guess that it's, my books are all the same central cast of characters. So it's not, I don't have one main character. I have a lead character, but I've got a, a whole cast of characters. There's like six or seven of them um, that that work as a team to, to catch serial killers. And so I've got some flexibility there, but I've also got a common thread that runs through that makes it really easy 
a lot easier on me as a discovery writer to do this, right? So um, I have basic ideas for each book, but I don't go in with any preconceived notions. It, I, it, it plays on my head like a movie and I just capture the movie on the page. That sometimes is, it takes a while. <laughs> right? Sometimes you're like, hello, hello, are you awake? Movie, are you going to play now? Yeah. Yes, totally so. understand that. Um, so have you have you been doing the Perma Free First and Series as a promotion tool? Do you use Facebook ads? Like how are you marketing <clears throat> these books? Um, when I first started, I was trying to do Amazon ads and Facebook ads and it, it, all I was doing was throwing money away. I could never get them dialed in enough mm -hmm. to, to make it worth my while. Um, and also as I went further down this path and, and the number of books and stuff started to grow, I figured, I, I figured out I didn't have, not only did I not have the inclination to try to figure them out, I didn't have the time because it takes a, I mean, for, going back and remembering the way I struggled with them, I was, I don't need to spend that time trying to dial in an ad. I need to be writing, right? I've got enough distractions as it is. I've, I've still got my full-time job. I'm not doing this full-time for a living yet. Okay. Um, so I've still got, I still work 40 hours a week, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I, I adopted the perma-free strategy in God, mid 2020 ish, somewhere in there but the first book in series three for on both, for both pen names. Um, mm -hmm. By the time I got to where I was writing romance, I was already aware of that strategy. So the minute I got three books written and started writing the fourth novella, I put the first one up as a perma free. So I've had the perma free strategy in place since mid 2020. Um, recently I, on the thriller side, I did uh, retire. I did put book one back to paid and I have a mini box set books one and two that I've, that I've moved to free to kind of mm -hmm. try to rotate th that through to keep the, the perma-free strategy fresh and, and going. Um, I don't do cost per click ads anymore. Haven't mm -hmm. for uh, at least, at least two and a half years, at least. Um, I do paid newsletters, not as often as I should. I know the rule of thumb is every six months, but you know, I've also, um, had a gentleman reach out to me last year. Uh, he saw my, got one of my books in one of the featured deals, uh, book book feature deals read it loved it and reached out to me about doing narration nice. for audiobooks yeah and um I adore him his voice is fabulous he um I've had so much fun reviewing the files and stuff as he's getting them done but it gives me goosebumps to listen he's just he's so passionate about the about the work he's as passionate about my books as I am which is really freaking cool and it amazing. shows it shows yeah. in the way he performs. So this year I have opted to not do the paid newsletters as much so I can focus on getting audiobooks paid for. Right. But last year audiobooks, that is a big chunk of change. That is not that is, that is not cheap. That is a huge chunk of change. Um, and that's my third point piece of advice to a newbie starting out. Don't feel like you have to put every format that's available in the world out for your books all at once, right up front. Mm -hmm. You really need to do these things in stages. Okay. Ebook is going to be the most cost effective place to start. It's the easiest to upload everywhere. It's the easiest to do marketing for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, especially if you're on a super tight budget marketing wise, and that's where you really want to do the paid newsletters because it's, you know, a 75 or $75, a uh, hit for a month and it's a fixed cost and you know what it is and you can plan and prepare for it versus a cost per click ad, which can get away from you very, very quickly, cost you a lot of money and get little to no return for if you don't have your ad structured correctly. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so my third tip is don't think you have to do all the things all at once. And step four is be very careful with cost per click ads because you've got to really keep a really tight rein on them, or you're going to blow through not only your ad budget, but money you might've had to set aside for covers and for editing and for formatting and for all these other things that are part and parcel of putting out a good quality product. Right. And I know it's your book baby, but the minute you put a price tag on it, it becomes a product. So you need to think, you need to be able to take off the author hat and put on the business owner hat and track your sales and expenses and see that data and look at that data to help you determine the best path for your business. And for, so for a lot of us, that's going to mean don't dive over into audiobooks the first year that you're that you're doing this. OK, give yourself time to build up a following and give yourself time to get enough titles out in series that you've got 
a group of readers that really love your work and are actively following you on Amazon, on Goodreads, on your, build your own website. Maybe take the money you were going to invest in audiobooks and get an author website built up if you haven't already, right? Yep. Because that's real estate you control. Yeah. Nobody absolutely. can mess with your real estate, right? We hear of authors whose Amazon accounts get banned or closed. We hear of authors who have something wonky happen and they get kicked off of Facebook. Well, mm -hmm. you don't want the ways that you reach your audience to only be social media platforms or other platforms that another entity controls. Because at the end of the day, it's not show friends, it's show business. Facebook is not <laughs> going to give a damn if they hurt your feelings by closing your account. Amazon, not going to give a damn if they hurt your feelings by closing your account. So it's always a good idea to put as many legs on your stool as possible. And that's why wide for the win is so important to get the message out. If you're in KU, it's a one-legged stool. The mm -hmm. chances of you toppling over are greater. The risk is greater. The reward oh, yeah. can be greater. That's arguable. I've never believed in that. Um, but also wide for the win is a, or wide is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. So you need to adjust your head, your mindset around that. Uh, but I personally don't do cost per click ads. Back to your question before I circled the planet and threw out <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> But I love how you actually brought it back. See, I usually just start, start wandering <laughs> off into the wilderness and then I'm like over here and I'm like, I don't know actually what we were talking about. What was the question again? That's usually how I do it. Um, so well, it, just if, if I can help can... even one person avoid some of the stuff that I went through, then it's worth it to talk yeah, about. It, you know? Absolutely. And I think people who are listening are definitely picking up on the um, the business side of your brain. Which I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is a good time to mention that you not only write mystery, thriller, suspense, and romance, but you are also in the nonfiction world. Am I right? I am. I am. And again, partially thanks to the Wide for the Wind group. When I joined this group, I realized that a lot of authors were struggling with how do I calculate this? How do I keep track of what I'm doing? How do I know if a book's doing any good? You know, all, all, all accounting concepts that I take for granted because I, I do it in my day job, right? And have for almost three decades. Oh my God, I'm old. Three decades. <laughs> my husband is going to his 25th um, high school reunion this weekend. And I'm like, oh my God, we're old. <laughs> I, d I understand. Yeah. I understand. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm sorry. That, that definitely explains all the silver. You just can't see them because I've got my hair slicked back and my headphones on, but they're there. <laughs> trust me. Um, yeah. So I, I, I started realizing that um, I was very blessed to be able to, to have the background that I do um, as far as my, I actually have an MBA with accounting concentration. Uh, I'm not a CPA and I have no desire to be one. Um, the amount of, of constant training you have to do to keep up with tax regulation changes and stuff is like, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And they vary from state to state, much less around the world. So I was like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to be a CPA. But I realized that maybe I could be the translator, right? Maybe I could take some accounting concepts that these people are are that they you really need to know you need to know if your ad is is, is putting you you need to know if, if any if the sales garnered from that ad are worth the cost of that ad right because you don't want to be yeah. throwing money away money is finite as is our time and everything costs something time or money right and so i thought you know i'm gonna try my best to translate into plain english all the accounting terms that authors need to know and I, I reached over and I tapped Mark Leslie Lefebvre on the shoulder and said, dude, <laughs> I need your help Hi. with this because I've got an idea to help authors, but mm -hmm. I have no, I've never written a nonfiction book. I actually I had never intended to, to write a nonfiction book, nonfiction book, because that's a whole different animal marketing wise and everything else. Right. And so I reached out to Mark and I said, I've got this idea. I think it's a good idea. I think it could really help people, but I need you. I need your help with this. And so he graciously agreed. And together we wrote Accounting for Authors. And that came out in 20, March 2022. So a year and a half ago-ish. Man, time's flying. 
Right. It's so funny when you said accounting for authors, my mind automatically supplied the blank accounting for love because that's the name of my first book is accounting for love. And so I'm like, no, 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 it's not accounting for authors. It's accounting for love. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, hold on. We're not talking about my catalog here. What? So accounting for authors, um, this is available in KU. Is that right? No, so you- no, no. Everywhere. <laughs> ah, I'm hilarious. You're adorable when you're sarcastic. Um, <laughs> no, it is definitely available wide. It's available in e- in ebook and in paperback. Um, we talked at, at one point about trying to do an audiobook for it. The problem with that is because I am talking numbers and formulas and walking people through how to do things. It's a very visual mm-hmm. medium, right? Yeah. Because I yeah. do have ex- a, there are screenshots in the book of like Excel examples that walk you specifically through how to calculate your break-even point and what is risk tolerance and risk capacity and why do I need to even think about those things as an author, but I go through and explain how those can help you make your business decisions. I mean, that book even has like, if you want to learn how to build your own financial statements, this book will show you how to, right? Um, Mm -hmm. I tried to keep it at a very basic level because i think a lot of people just they hear the word accounting and one of two things happen either they immediately think taxes taxes is nothing but taxes or they just glaze over because they don't want to deal with it right right and so yeah so are you trying to say this book is not just about taxes then is that is that what you're saying (laughs) i think the only thing we even mentioned about taxes in there is that you should talk to a certified professional in your area (laughs) <laughs> because because this isn't it this isn't it because it like i said i mean tax the tax stuff varies so much even within state to state in the united states um and of course around the world is they're completely different balls of wax there's no person alive on the planet that's going to be able to tell you every single subtle and nuanced tax rule regulation for everywhere around the world that person doesn't exist mm-hmm. and, and there are people who are CPAs that have been CPAs for years and they could spend every day, all day for the rest of their natural existence researching tax stuff and never be completely up to date on everything everywhere around the world. It's 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 a fool's errand. So I tell people up front, if you want me to help you track your sales and your expenses and look at your profit margin and look at your, hey, this series is doing, you know, it has historically done better sales wise than this series. To help you make those kind of decisions, I'm happy to do that, but I will not talk tax with people. That's a slippery slope. Yeah, absolutely. Not that I don't want to. I can't. I can't in good conscience. I will not give tax advice. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. <laughs> back foul beast um so, <laughs> so i think probably the <clears throat> the top question that people asked when they first heard about accounting for authors was oh so this is this isn't going to be applicable outside of the u.s right because it's going to be they it, people really do equate accounting equals taxes like in their brain that's that is the equation that's the accounting equation that they know and exactly. and i I feel like it's it's important that people understand that um, uh, taxes is just one small part of of accounting and figuring out is your business making money like where should you be spending your advertising dollars does it make sense for you to create an audiobook at this point in your career or have you not made enough money and you know right. all those sorts of things so so this book yep. has a very international appeal um, absolutely could live in yeah. Zimbabwe or Antarctica or in the accounting <laughs> principles are the same, no matter where yep. you live on the planet. Exactly. And, and we purposely chose to focus on the pieces that were universally applicable. Yeah. Because really- the account, the accounting, qua- the, the basic accounting equation is assets equals liability plus equity, right? So the things you own, equals the debt you owe minus whatever's left over. That principle, that equation does not change. It doesn't matter if you're in Zimbabwe, Canada, Portugal, or the United States. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with US dollars, Canadian, what are the, what's the Canadian? Dollars. Co- They're dollars. dollars? Okay. Canadian dollars. I heard, so. I heard loony before. <laughs> oh, um, Swiss, Swiss, I think Swiss. that's a, I think that's yeah. a nickname. Like ours would be bucks, right? I think. That's gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Nickname. So uh, Swiss francs, um, euros, uh, pounds, sterling, Australian dollars, none of that matters. 
the 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 items and the how-to stuff in that book are applicable across to all authors. The genre doesn't matter. Geo geographic location doesn't matter. None of that matters. Okay. Everybody, everybody will get at least one piece of data that they can actually apply to their author business out of that book. And that was by design. Okay. So let's say that for those of us in the room, definitely not named Aaron Wright, who are not super math minded and they read the book and they're like, okay, like this makes sense on a logical level. And I, I get what I'm, I'm wanting out of this, but I, I don't have the time or the inclination to do this my, myself. And I would mm -hmm. really just rather hand this as a chunk to someone else and be like, here, do the thing, will you? I, I, I would love to do, have you do the thing. Is that even a possibility with you? Like, could I hand yes. over my accounting stuff and be like, yay, and let me know if I'm making any money? <laughs> that would be an Aaron yeah. question. <laughs> Am I making money? I'm just curious. <laughs> Um, yes, actually, very, re fa fairly recently, I came to the realization that um, I can actually do more good for my fellow authors than just put a book out. Uh, so I am uh, my sister who also has about 20 ish years uh, doing accounting work and I have banded together and we have formed two of hearts business services. Okay. Um, and we we will not be doing tax filing. I want to get that out in front right now. <laughs> we we will not be doing tax filing and we will not be offering um, tax advice at all. What we will do is track your raw sale, take your raw sales data and we will convert it into numbers in an, a, a, a gap standardized format. Gap is generally accepted accounting principles using accounting software. Okay. So we'll take your raw data from your storefronts or from scribe count, however you have your stuff set up. Um, it's important to note that we will never ask for your storefront logins or your banking logins. We believe in that confidentiality is paramount mm -hmm. and that security of data is paramount. So essentially what we do is we form a partnership with our clients. Our clients send us the data that they want tracked and we track it. We put it into the accounting software. Uh, you will be, uh, our, our clients are presented with a standardized balance sheet and a profit and loss statement every month. Mm -hmm. This is also super good for helping make sure that all your stuff is gathered up for you to give to your tax professional at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. This is going to make your life a, a lot easier from that regard as well. Um, the thing that we offer that's going to make us different from other bookkeeping services is we speak in the author, right? So we understand what a permit free is. We understand mm -hmm. I made a book sale in June, but I'm not going to get paid for it until October. <laughs> right? right. Yeah. So yeah. we have the ability to, to stay within those gap standards that I talked about, but we also have the ability to build in some trackability by series. So if you're an author and you've got, uh, two pen names and you've got six series under each pen name, we can track all that, right? And we can give you data for your company as a whole, for your business as a whole every month. But if you want to get, I want to see uh, a profit and loss and a balance sheet statement just for my XYZ series, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because I feel like sometimes, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just want to say, I feel like sometimes um, us authors will make decisions more based on gut. Like, you know, it seems like that series has been showing up in my sales reporting more often. So I'm obviously making more money from it. Like that's just, you know, <laughs> um, that's the, the, uh, non, non-business people in the rooms version of figuring out money sometimes. So I, anyway, just moving right along. Um, yeah. uh, I feel like having that kind of knowledge, um, at your fingertips of like, you know, actually, so turns out this over here is doing really well. And if I'm going to be spending money on say translations, it makes a lot of sense to do it with this series when my gut had been like, ah, no, no, it's this one over here that's doing well. And so right. it gives you, you're making decisions based on actual knowledge, not just, uh, your, your gut and what you think, um, and what you ate for breakfast and a coin toss. Right. 
Well, and, and other things too, you can, you can get pleasant surprises out of your data too. Like I forget which title it was, but it's like, I had a couple months where I actually did better in paperback version and large print paperback edition than I did in eBooks for a month. And I was like, Whoa, what drove that? You know? Right. So, but if I hadn't analyzed the data, I never would have known that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Okay. So one last question before I let you go, I have to know what is your, sh what does your shirt say? Oh, I've been trying to read it. <laughs> Sorry. It says it's a vital secrets thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> and tell everybody why, what and vital it's secrets got, is. That's my thriller series. And then I've got my two of hearts.com. That's my author website on the back. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I bought this one as a kind of like a, a beta test to see how how well the the font and stuff would look. I'm experimenting with different colors and stuff. One of my personal goals for maybe not this year because I've got the audiobook thing going on, but definitely 2024 is I do have an author website. I do have my books up there as but I want to start adding merch and then I want to really expand on the whole direct sales thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got that gun is locked and loaded. It's not effective yet. And that's, that's on me. I need to, to get some time set aside, budgeted as it were, uh, right. everything costs something. <laughs> um, I need to budget some time to, um, to get my, my author store, um, to where it is fulfilling the potential that it has. Mm -hmm. It could be a lot more robust and it could be a hell of a lot more successful. So yeah. that's one of my, it's one of my personal bucket list things for 2024. So, okay. So if someone wanted to go to your website, twoofhearts.com, but I, I think that maybe, um, somebody who isn't watching, but is listening, we should probably spell out that URL because there's a couple Dude. of potential trip ball, you know, uh, uh, pitfalls in there. Right. Um, well, for the, if you're interested in looking at the author side of my world, that is two of hearts.com. It's the number two, the word of, and then hearts, H A R T S.com. And if you are interested in learning more about um, accounting related things uh, uh, applicable to your business, um, you are welcome to visit my other website, <laughs> which is two of hearts business services, which is Two of hearts, the number two, the word of H A R T S, and then A C C T G dot com. It's an abbreviation for accounting. Um, if you uh, are, if you want to talk to us about um, taking the hassle out of your life as far as trying to track your finances and stuff, there's a client intake form you can fill out. If you just want some tips, tools, and templates, we've got that too. Um, yeah. I'm, and I'm adding stuff more and more all the time to the website. Um, I'm putting up video tutorials, things like how to calculate your break-even point, um, how to apply risk tolerance and risk capacity thinking to your business, to your author business decision. Um, there's podcasts and blog articles. I'll probably put a copy of, I'll probably put a link to this podcast in there. Hello, um, future readers who found us Hello, that link. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, there's a link to the Accounting for Authors book. Uh, and that, like as, as previously stated, that book's available wide. So yeah, um, if, if I could answer questions, I'm more than happy to, um, with the caveat that I'm again, not going to, not going to talk about anything tax related. Um, not that I don't want to, I just, um, I do not have the depth of knowledge that somebody is going to need to be able to make a reasonable decision based on my recommendations work when it comes to tax and that's a liability for them and for me yeah so that i prefer to all stay friends right i can help you with hey you might want to consider adjusting your ad spend because this series over here is doing a little bit better or hey you're really taking off with hard covers who you know that's awesome or you know hey maybe don't do translations just yet i mean i myself am at a point in my career i can look at the data easily and say yeah i'm not i don't need to to try to touch translations for a while, right? Absolutely. And it's important, especially when you're newer, it's important to know that you don't have to. That's the other, the final thing I want to stress to people is you don't have to, oh my God, I've got to have a translation in German and French and Italian and a paperback and a hardcover and an audiobook. And no, you don't. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Start with ebook. Mm -hmm. Kiss. Yeah. Keep it simple, silly. 
start with a book. <laughs> Billy, that's a nicer version than that the is the nicer version. version. <laughs> I Most always people know. Up. Yes, right. yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Deanna, for coming on today. You, you're fantastic. Um, and thank you to everybody out there who's listening. And until next time, I hope you have a very wide and wonderful day. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wide for the Win podcast. The music for this podcast, Sax and Rock and Roll, was composed and recorded by Kevin McLeod and was licensed for use in this recording. Stay in touch with fellow Wide authors at wideforthewin.com and check out the regular live Wide streams over at youtube.com slash wideforthewin.com.